Well, hello again there, you lovely, lovely love loungers. It's me, Mick Scarlet, here again with pearls of wisdom about sex, love, relationships, and other stuff. Today, I am answering a problem sent to us by Dave. Dave is a 50-something-year-old disabled man. Good age, Dave, good age. Um, he had his accident when he was 18. I had mine when I was 15, so I kind of know what you mean. Um, and he's having great difficulty finding love, or even a partner. Um, he had one partner very early on, just after his uh, um, accident. Um, and since then, she broke his heart, and since then, it's been a wilderness. So what can I do to help you? Well, um, firstly, I remember um, that early period. Um, you said it was quite early on in your you know, road of disability. Uh, and I remember that I made a total hash of telling a girl I was going out with about my impairment. Um, it became uh, more of a... <laughs> psychological problem for me telling her I mean it did actually me you know it wasn't I didn't tell it in a way that made her feel that I knew that that I was give, I was a good deal shall we say and she very sweetly um sort of said mm, maybe not and I kind of understood because as I was doing it I was thinking well I'm really messing this up um but I learned from it and I think that lots of disabled people don't realise that if you sell yourself short, then other people are going to believe what you've told them. If you say, I've got all these things wrong with me and I'm a bag of crap, then they're going to think, well, do I want a bag of crap? No, I don't want a bag. No one wants a crap partner. Um, so I think that's really important is to examine the way you tell someone. Now, you say you've got epilepsy and uh, issues with memory, among other things. Um, my wife's father had uh, epilepsy, very severe epilepsy, and also had problems remembering things or anything. And of course, he ended up married with three kids. So it's possible. He was also probably the best person I've ever met at telling someone he was disabled, because he kind of went, hey, take it or leave it. Um, and kind of, was sort of a right lad. And I think that kind of works. But you'll find your own way. I think it's just important to stop before you start looking for love and think, how am I doing this? What have I said to all the people that went, oh, no thanks. Was it, was it just that they were shallow? Or was it that I'm doing something wrong and can I change it? Then I think the other big thing is we do have to learn to love ourselves. The greatest love of all. Yes, we've got to see in the mirror someone that we think other people will fall in love with. And I don't think a lot of us do. A lot of us buy the stereotype that we aren't relationship fodder. So therefore, we don't sell ourselves as worth being in a relationship. And so it becomes a vicious circle. Um, so... I know it's tough, especially, you know, when you've had nearly 40 years of being alone. But remember, you're kind of at a good age because there's lots of newly divorced people out there trying to look for a really nice person. So basically, you've got the pickings um, as long as you are a nice person. So, so think about that. Think about your personality. Think about who you are. Think about, you know, so you're epileptic. So what? You know, everyone's got baggage. Um, and, you know, you are straight, you are looking for a woman, but I think whatever you are, there are people out there who want to find someone they can care for. And sometimes someone confident in their own impairment, but who will need support sometimes is a very attractive offer. So don't think it's an, or it's just a bad thing all the way around. Um, there will be people who go, oh yeah, oh, of course, yeah, and give it a go. But how do you meet these people? Well. I say the best way is to find an interest. Anything, sport, art, music, amateur dramatics, singing clubs, 
anything, book clubs even, find somewhere where people go to share an interest that you have an interest in. Don't, don't go and watch the football, no, football. You know, if I went to watch the football, it would just be, what's going on, right? I met my wife uh, in a nightclub because all of my, because my whole scene of being punky and weird base, basically revolves around nightclubs. And every girl I've been out with, I met in a nightclub uh, because that's where we all went. And I would meet them in a nightclub and then I'd take them out on a date to a nightclub and it would be, it would be a while before we went anywhere else. So we knew each other. Um, and you, you could do that in, you know, an art appreciation thing at a gallery. Um, you could be in uh, amateur dramatics. Is I think anything where people work together. So, you know, if it's sport, it's got to be like a supporters club. If it's, um, if it's, you know, book club, art clubs, all those things where you, you get to share something. I think that really works. Then you develop an interest. Then you develop mates. Um, and then when you meet someone there, you have something to talk about. Also, it may be that you introduce your impairment at some point. You know, hello, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to be joining the cast on this amateur play. By the way, I have epilepsy, so if I drop down, you know, this is what to do. Uh, I also have memory issues, so it might be that you that might need to help me with prompts. That's a way of kind of introducing it without going, oh, I'm really crap, don't marry me, don't date me, right? And then they'll get to know that without it being something you've brought up in a relationship way. Lots of people use online dating. I think for disabled people, online dating is rubbish because all it means is people don't get to know you you have to bring up the impairment normally earlier on than you would do. Um, and so they just go, oh, I don't know, and go away. Um, I have always believed that you don't tell people about stuff until it matters. Uh, I'm quite open about the fact that um, my spinal cord injury not only took away my ability to walk, but it took away the ability to get erections. Um, but I don't, you know, I didn't used to anyway, tell people about this stuff until we were in a position where we might be about to get into bed. I didn't go, hello, my name's Mick and my cock don't work. You know what I mean? I kind of would bring it up when the time seemed right. Um, now I'm happily married, um, I'm more open. And my wife supports me in that because she understands that lots of the problems that we feel about being disabled, we put upon ourselves. But we don't allow, um, we don't tell society the truth. So how is any other disabled person going to know it? Um, and lastly... And I know, that, you know, this is kind of a bit of a weird one, but you could also start thinking about going out with someone who is also disabled. I went out with a succession of women who were not disabled. And my wife, um, we discussed this over, poly, you know, over our many political discussions, I would say is disabled. She has a scar all down one side of her body from a burn as a child and it's partially deaf. She says, I'm not disabled because it doesn't really impact on my ability. Um, it's just a physical difference. But I sort of say, well, that's what mine is, really. You know, in my wheelchair, I'm super scooty. And I would say that my shared experience with my wife of operations and surgery and people treating you differently, which is what the social model of disability says disability is, um, has meant we have a shared experience. Um, so that might be something and it could be any you know i think the thing is don't limit yourself i find lots of disabled people go i haven't had any really relationships and then you find out they kind of want to go out with supermodel and it's like well you know most people it's not about disability most people have issues with relationships most people right especially when you get to our age single at our age is difficult so don't worry so much about it being disabled and think it more it might be about just who you're with where you go what you do try to love yourself try to think that actually i'm a catch so what if i'm disabled i'm still a catch i'll be a really good boyfriend a really good husband right and then go places where people who share your interests are so they can fall in love with you without it being a big we're going on a date and they think well he's a really nice guy i quite like to go on a date with him bosh and then tell them about hopefully they'll know about your impairment but tell them with more detail in a way that 
means you explain it so that it's not a terrible thing. Um, and that, I think, is my advice. I hope that helped, Dave. It's quite a long one. Ten minutes. Good God, I'll bore the teeth off you. But hopefully, you may see... You'll get something from this, and you will go out and give it a go. Keep in touch. Um, I say that to everyone. Please, if you've written in, please tell us how it goes. But definitely, you guys, keep in touch, because um, hopefully, things will go well. Um, and for all the buzzing that's gone on during this thing, it's because I'm using my mobile phone and I don't know how to turn the notifications off while I'm filming. <laughs> because I'm so tech savvy. Um, anyway, that's me, Mick Scarlet, uh, for the Love Lounge. Uh, I hope to help Dave and to all other people out there. Don't forget, to send us your questions, send us your, your problems or anything, and we'll try and help. I thank you very much and goodbye.